Okay, good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to class. Welcome to another new week. Uh, thank you all for uh, joining class this morning. Uh, we'll begin with a word of prayer. So can I ask Susan to lead us in prayer, please? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this wonderful day you have given us, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you, Jesus. You come in our midst and help us to understand and uh, give us knowledge and wisdom, Lord, to grasp all things, whatever ma'am teaches us. And also fill, uh, fill Selena, ma'am, also with your abundant wisdom, Lord, help her to teach us whatever you want us to learn, Lord. Lord Jesus, also I pray for every uh, students also who have joined here, Lord Jesus. Let your blessings be each one on each one of us. Ask in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Susan. Uh, so last uh, week, we uh, in our last class, we looked at the qualifications of a teacher. Uh, basically, we said in children's ministry, the messengers and the methods are needed to proclaim the message. Uh, goes through the empowering of the Holy Spirit. Uh, so we looked at what a messenger should do to uh, effectively proclaim uh, the message or the gospel of Jesus Christ um, in this lesson. And then we, of course, we began looking at uh, the methods a messenger or a teacher or a children's church minister should incorporate uh, to effectively communicate the message in a very relevant, in a very productive way uh, to children. Uh, so we began looking at the methods. And the first uh, thing that I mentioned uh, last week is the, to choose or to prepare a relevant curriculum. So to prepare a re relevant curriculum, you know, uh, we need to choose relevant topics uh, for the children that are age specific, uh, children that you are teaching, uh, and prepare those uh, the curriculum or choose the topics based on uh, the developmental needs of children in that age group. And we went through, uh, you know, specifically we looked at uh, the developmental needs of uh, children in, uh, in different age groups. Um, and last week I also ran you through uh, a list of topics that we could choose or uh, a list of topics for the curriculum uh, that uh, you know we could uh, use for grades uh, or ages five to seven okay so i just ran you through basic uh, topics uh, in a curriculum that you could use for children in ages uh, five to seven and i chose those topics based on the developmental needs of children in that age um, so, you know, how did I choose the topics? Uh, basically, I looked at uh, the, the spiritual messages that the children in that age group need to hear. So if you look back at your notes and if you look at uh, the developmental needs of children ages five to seven, uh, you will see a section there which uh, talks about the spiritual messages that children in that age group uh, need to hear. So based on that um, you know, the spiritual messages that children in that age group have to hear, I basically listed out the topics which I ran through uh, last class. I said that, you know, we'll talk about creation, uh, that God loves them, he loves everyone, uh, God knows you, God hears our prayer, God is dependable, trustworthy, always good. The next topic is there's a difference between right and wrong, and then uh, talking about sin and salvation, where we, we said that, you know, how we, uh, the topic can be like, you know, uh, all of us have sin or we are sinners. Jesus came to pay for our sins. Um, uh, you know, God, uh, everyone has sinned. God sees our sin. What is the consequences of sin? And that Jesus is the answer for uh, the consequence for our sin or the, our sinful actions. Um, or the result of what, uh, you know, our sinful actions can yield. Um, so those are the topics that uh, I had listed out for grades uh, or ages five to seven. 
And then, you know, uh, once you have the topics uh, for that specific age group, the next thing that you need to do is, you know, write out the um, uh, write out the learning objectives for each topic. Okay. Now, the learning objective. Uh, why do you need to write the learning objective for each topic? Is because once you have a clarity about the learning objectives, then you will be able to choose the relevant narratives or the stories in the Bible. Uh, that will help bring out the learning or uh, understanding of that specific uh, topic. So once you list out the topics, you know, uh, write out the learning objective for each uh, topic. Now, the learning objective should be brief, uh, clear. It should be uh, specific statements of what you want the learners uh, to uh, be able to learn. Uh, or uh, what you want the learners to do at the end of the lesson as a result of your teaching, as a result of their learning, as a result of all the activities that has taken uh, place. So uh, the learning objective should be maximum two or three objectives for each topic, and it should be specific uh, catering to the needs of the children in that age group. So you've chose, chosen the list of topics based on the developmental needs. Now, when you're listing out the objectives for each topic or subtopics, you know, you need to ensure that the learning objectives for each of those topics or subtopics should be specifically catering to the needs of the children in that um, age group. And don't have more than two or three objectives uh, for each um, uh, topic. Now, uh, based on the objectives, you know, you have a clarity about what you want to teach in that specific uh, topic or in that specific lesson uh, that can uh, address that topic that you have chosen. Uh, it becomes much more easier to choose the relevant narrative uh, or the relevant biblical narrative, uh, which can bring out the learning or the understanding of that topic. OK, now, for example, if the first topic that you have chosen is Jesus is the creator, then you could have uh, these three learning objectives. Uh, the first learning objective can be that he created everything through his spoken word. Uh, so how God created everything, he created everything through his spoken word. So that is the first main objective that you want children to learn and know how God created everything. The second thing, uh, second learning objective can be that he created everything beautiful, perfect and in order. Uh, and then you, of course, you'll go on to uh, share or uh, teach them uh, how God created everything beautiful, perfect in order. But why do we see a lot of imperfection, disorder or uh, chaos in creation or in the world that we uh, live in? Okay. And the third learning objective can be that because he created everything, you know, all creation uh, obeys him. So these can be your three learning objectives. Now, if you're having a, a learning objective for ages five to seven, then you can just keep it very, very uh, brief, minimal to two points. I would just choose to keep the first two that he created everything through a spoken word and he created everything beautiful, perfect and uh, in order. Now, if you're uh, teaching uh, children, uh, you know, uh, grade um, five, six, seven, upward then you can even add you know he create uh, because he created everything all creation uh, obeys him or if you choose to have this also as a part of the learning experience for ch uh, uh, children um, ages five to seven then you can have uh, two parts for your um, uh, this whole topic on Jesus is the creator one part you're talking about how he created everything perfect and beautiful through his spoken word. And then this part two can be that he created uh, that uh, because he created everything, all creation obeys him. Now, since I have my objectives in place for this topic that Jesus is the creator or God is the creator, uh, I can choose the relevant um, uh, uh, biblical narrative. So what do you think would be a good biblical narrative for uh, children ages five to seven, uh, you know, talking about Jesus as a creator with, um, you know, having these first two objectives that he created everything through spoken word and he created everything beautiful, perfect and in order. 
which uh, biblical narrative would you choose? Any thoughts, any ideas? Um, uh, me, I am I'm conferring with you that setting the objectives for each topic would be very, very helpful because when those ob objectives are set, then it is from such objectives that you can develop perhaps topic themes, topical themes like uh, if you are speaking about Jesus who heals, Jesus who saves, maybe you are talking to a group of saved children, then the saved child will be able to recognize that Jesus heals, then the unsaved child will be able to recognize that Jesus can heal them. In such way, you will be arriving at your set target. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. Uh, so my question, again, I'll repeat that. Uh, I was saying that, you know, uh, I chose this topic as Jesus is a creator for um, uh, ages five to seven. And I've written out, listed out my learning objective for this specific topic, uh, which is he created everything through his spoken word and he created everything beautiful, perfect and in order. Okay. So which biblical narrative would best suit children in this age group? and would also achieve the learning objective. Thank you, Rupa. So Rupa says Genesis chapter 1, which is talking about uh, uh, how God created the world. OK. Um, OK, if, if I add on this learning objective, because God created everything, all creation obeys him, then what, which uh, uh, Bible narrative would best suit this learning objective? She talks about how God created everything, but all creation obeys him. Which biblical narrative would best suit this learning objective? Yes, say. Um, I have to. Um, God telling, God telling the, uh, the will to give up Jonah, and then also Jesus Christ uh, stealing the storm when he was on the boat. Okay, thank you. Jesus tells the storm. Um, uh, God tells the big fish to swallow uh, Jonah uh, and, you know, to throw him out uh, on the shore uh, or to vomit him on the shore. Okay, that is uh, two narratives. Another narrative anyone else can think of? Uh, Red Sea, okay. Psalm 19.1, uh, uh, we're choosing narratives, uh, Shri Koma, stories for children. Uh, ten plagues, okay. Thank you, Rupa. Yes, say. And also the flood of no, the flood that um, that uh, destroyed the world. The flood destroying the world and then the flood receding for Noah to come out. That again too is a narrative that shows God's control over nature and creation. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Kung says, uh, yes, God uh, causing the suns to stand still. Okay. Uh, Elijah fed by the raven. Susan's story of Naaman. Okay. Noah's story and the animals coming. Yes. Good. Okay. Uh, so you could choose any one of these narratives. I would just go with uh, Jesus stills the storm and God causing the sun to stand still. Um, you can also use the other uh, narratives. Okay. Okay. So, you know, um, once you uh, choose your topics, you write down your learning objectives and then you choose the relevant narratives that best suit um the uh, the topic that you have chosen now once you have this in place then you know uh, when you are um, uh, you know choosing the topics for the whole curriculum you could see okay now uh, i've put jonah here in this uh, for creation uh, but jonah would uh, you know uh, suit well for another topic so then i would kind of remove Jonah from, you know, uh, from using it in uh, the topic for Jesus as a creator and maybe use it for, you know, um, uh, 
uh, uh, you know, another lesson like talk, when you're talking about disobedience or, uh, you know, uh, sin, uh, not uh, obedient, disobedience has consequences, whatever you could use that. Uh, so anything, you know, you so once you have this whole curriculum in place, all the learning objectives, the topics, the narratives, you can miss, uh, you can uh, see what suits best in uh, which um, topic, the narrative suits best in which topic, and you can move things around. And then you have a good curriculum that you can begin working with the children uh, for a year. Now I'm, uh, you know, spending time on uh, you know, in, uh, discussing about how to prepare a curriculum because this was one of the questions that our e-learning students um, uh, asked me. And also it's very, very important, you know, just can't uh, think of something that, you know, okay, uh, Saturday night, I think of some story which I'm going to tell the children the next day and then just go and, you know, narrate the story to them. It's really not going to uh, work that way. It's not going to be very effective. And, um, you know, it's, uh, we serve a God who is a God of order and discipline. He plans everything uh, beforehand. And so he wants us to work in the same way, um, even as we minister in his house, even as we minister to the body of Christ. There has to be some sense of perfection, order, uh, discipline in which we go about uh, doing um, things. So preparing a curriculum uh, is very, very important. And uh, anyone has any questions on this about how to prepare a curriculum? Basically, you have all the developmental needs of children of different age groups. Just look at them, uh, make a list of, you know, you have the spiritual needs listed out there. Uh, just list out everything or list the topics that would be relevant for that age group. List out the uh, 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 learning objectives relevant again for that age group and then choose the uh, best narratives that will suit that uh, topic. Okay. Any questions? I need to know that uh, learning objectives differs based on specific age groups and also the felt needs of children in that specific uh, age. Okay, so uh, your learning objective should basically be not what you want to communicate, what is your need, what uh, you feel like communicating to the children uh, uh, or what you sense is the need because sometimes when we are writing uh, we will bring in our needs our thoughts but it's uh, important that we base uh, our learning objectives on the uh, developmental needs of children in that age group and what is their felt need what is their need uh, in that age group uh, uh, for those children and based on the their felt needs you know, you need to list out the learning objectives and choose the uh, narratives, okay? Now, once you have listed out the topics, uh, listed out the learning objectives for each topic, so you've chosen uh, the narratives, you can begin writing the lesson plan for each uh, uh, topic, okay, uh, or for each lesson. Now, you might be wondering, why do we need to write the lesson plan, I will, uh, you know, by the end of, uh, you know, two or three classes, you will come to know why it's important for us to write a lesson um, plan, okay? Writing a lesson plan will basically help us uh, prepare well for our class. Um, uh, there is no substitute for a well-prepared teacher. Uh, you will notice that if you're well-prepared with your lesson, you know, classroom control, uh, could improve uh, significantly uh, because in most classes, uh, you know, you have uh, uh, prepared uh, effectively and you have, you know, what you have to say and it would just, uh, you will be able to communicate well uh, to the children and also be able to control uh, the classroom. Uh, or the, the children in the class. So classroom control could improve significantly um, through effective preparation. If you're spending adequate time preparing, uh, it also means that the time that you are going to be spending is going to be more productive. Uh, children are going to enjoy the class. They will basically just learn, receive, and soak uh, in all that you are teaching them, telling them, uh, you know, communicating to them, and they will also be motivated to uh, learn. Now, a good thumb rule is that, you know, you spend no less than four times 
uh, the length of your teaching time in preparation. Now, for example, if you have a 30 class of 30 minutes, you are going your lesson uh, time that has been given to you that's been scheduled is 30 minutes, 30 minutes of teaching time. Uh, uh, it means that you must, uh, you know, plan to spend no less than two hours of preparing uh, uh, the lesson. Okay, so it is, you know, if you have uh, uh, 30 minutes, you spend no less than two hours because the good thumb rule is to spend uh, no less than four times the length of your uh, teaching um, time. So if your topic is difficult, you know, uh, and it needs a little more explanation, detailed explanation, then you will want to spend some more time just preparing that lesson uh, during the week. Uh, now, if you're teaching on a Sunday, usually, you know, uh, we have children's church or Sunday school on Sunday, but some of you have a, a kids club or you do things during the week, uh, then it would be best if you begin preparing from the previous uh, Friday. Now, suppose I'm teaching um, uh, 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 next Sunday in church. I'm teaching, or I'm teaching this coming Sunday. Then I should have pre started preparing my uh, for my class uh, last Friday. Okay, uh, so. You know, or you can start preparing uh, from today, which is Monday. So if I'm teaching this Sunday in, in children's church or in Sunday school, I'll start preparing from this uh, Monday. So start preparing a week in advance. Uh, why is it important to start preparing a week in advance uh, or, you know, uh, so many days prior to your class? is so that when you come across, you know, different stories, incidents, uh, you know, or you just look at objects and, you know, uh, there pops an idea about how you can use that object to communicate uh, the lesson or, you know, you're basically, um, uh, you know, mulling over the whole or thinking over the whole lesson. And then, you know, uh, suddenly this, uh, what happened in your life in the past, uh, how you dealt with this problem or how you understood this or how God communicated this truth to you, you know, you could uh, 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 narrate it to the children or you could look for creative activities, creative object lessons, gives you time to think through the lesson and how best you can communicate. And also it helps you to, um, you know, write out your um, uh, a lesson, the lesson plan and, uh, you know, l remove things that are not required, that are not necessary and just put in the important things that are important to communicate to uh, the children. Okay. So if you begin, uh, you know, preparing your class a week prior, you know, just help you to, uh, you know, look at uh, relevant stories, incidents, object lessons, uh, demonstrations that you could uh, use uh, for your class and which will help bring out the lesson uh, more clearly, give more clarity to the children. It will be very, very interactive, interesting, um, and children will just enjoy your uh, uh, class. Now, if you prepare your class a day or two prior, it may not be too effective or helpful or beneficial uh, because you might not have sufficient time to think through, uh, to prepare the object lessons, to get the objects or relevant stories. But if you do this, uh, you know, uh, a week in advance, you have time to prepare through, to think through the lesson. And, you know, once you do your part, your best, you know, God is faithful. He will do the rest. Now, it's important to write down everything that you are going to teach the children. Uh, why is it important to write down everything? Because sometimes we think, hey, you know, I'm just teaching children. It's okay if I just run through the whole thing in my mind. I can just communicate it. You know, we can forget uh, some details of the narratives. We can forget, uh, you know, there won't be clarity. There will not be a, a, a good uh, uh, thread of uh, of uh, connection of what you are saying throughout the story. You can miss out some points. You can forget some things. Um, so just writing down the whole thing also, you know, gives you clarity what you're going to say uh, as a recap for the previous lesson. Uh, you know, you can also uh, prepare your lesson based on the learning objectives. So you're having your, you know, you're running with your main truth throughout 
the lesson, you're dealing with the felt needs of the children throughout the lesson. You will not uh, diverse. You will not, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, go take different paths or talk about different things. It can be very confusing for children. For adults, it's okay, but for children, you know, you need to keep it straight. You need to have the main truth running through just like a you know single thread throughout which they're just holding on and they can just pass through very very uh, easily okay uh, it will also give you clarity what is your attention getter what is uh, you know um, uh, the learnings that you're going to bring about what is the stories what is the application um, also, you will know exactly what are the important points you need to say, what is necessary, what is not necessary. Now, if you write out the lesson plan, you will uh, you will uh, you will uh, notice that the lesson is too uh, you know big for um, uh, for uh, a thirty minute class, uh, and the points that you have written down are all important. Uh, so you know it will just help you to know where to stop. Okay, where to bring that whole uh, lesson to a, a, a stop. So I will stop at this point. What is my learning that I'm going to bring out? Uh, what is the application? And then, you know, the, 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 the latter half of the content that you have, you know, uh, that you can use for uh, the next class. So you have more clarity on this. You don't prepare a big lesson and a long lesson. And then you go get to class and you realize, hey, I just started the lesson, you know, and I haven't finished it. And then, you know, children are just left without any learning, without any application. You just say, we'll continue next class, uh, which has not, uh, you know, helped the children in any way. It's not benefited the time that you're spending with them. So once you write out the whole lesson, you know where to start, where to stop, what is the important points you need to say, what is not necessary, what you can remove out, uh, what is, um, uh, if there are too many learning uh, activities or stories that you are trying to bring in, your own life example, everything, you know, you can know which to remove, which to keep, which is important. And also writing out the story will ensure that you're keeping the main truth running throughout the whole lesson. Now, we need to remember that children are not like adults, uh, you know, who uh, for us adults, you know, we can um, we can move from one point to another point. We can come back to the first point. We can go to the third point and adults can kind of navigate their way through what you are uh, preaching or teaching them, but not so with children. For children, you know, if you are talking about uh, one main truth, you need to stick to that main truth. You can't bring out three, four truths in that main story, in that story, sorry, and the children will get thoroughly confused. So if your main truth is, you know, um, uh, that uh, God created the world um, through his word, and he created it perfect and beautiful. That is what you need to stress at every point, even as you are teaching them. That is what you need to reiterate every time you are bringing out you know, what God created on day one, day two, day three. You know, he said it was good, which means it is perfect. And, you know, uh, God said, so he spoke again. And then, you know, uh, 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 there was light, the, he spoke and the light and the darkness separated. And when God looked at it, it was day one. He said it was good. Uh, so each day you're reiterating that same point. You're not going to move from that point to something else. And at the end of, you know, when you have finished talking about six days of creation, children would have, you know, this thought would have just been ingrained or imprinted on their minds that, hey, God created everything through his spoken word. He said came about, uh, he said, and everything happened, and everything that he created is perfect and good, which they will never forget for the rest of their um, life. So it's important to keep the main truth running throughout the whole lesson, and please ensure that you have just one main truth for each lesson and not have five, six, which can be very confusing. At the most, one or two is okay for the older uh, children. Also, once you write out your lesson plan, you will be able to include relevant um, activities, object lessons, uh, ways to cater to children's different uh, styles of learning. Remember, we learned that uh, different learning styles, um, you know, uh, the uh, and also the different uh, intelligences or ways of learning, the eight different intelligences or uh, ways of um, learning. So 
when you look at your lesson, you say, hey, did I cater to, uh, you know, the learning styles, at least the five senses through which learning happens? Uh, did I include most of the eight intelligences in my, you know, ways of learning? And if I have missed out something, you know, what I could do, uh, you know, s simple and best uh, to, uh, to include that um, learning style, <coughs> sorry, or the eight different intelligences or ways of uh, learning. Okay, so it's so important that you um, write out the lesson plan so that, you know, you also know where you can appropriately uh, put a full stop in the lesson, where you can break the lesson, uh, where you continue on from next week. Now, if you're stopping the lesson here, what is the conclusion that you're bringing out? So you need to stop in a place where there is a relevant conclusion that you can bring about a good learning uh, um, uh, for them and a good application um, as well. Now, when you have written all of your entire lesson, uh, you know, it will give you more confidence uh, to teach your class. It will also help you to handle the class because you know you have clarity. Uh, you know, there is no confusion. You're not thinking what to do. You know, you have everything ready, prepared. There's no waste of time. There's no confusion. And there's a good flow uh, of thought in your class. And you will just have the children absorbing, uh, just soaking in everything that you are teaching them. They will just be like that sponge you know, or the sponge just absorbing everything that you are uh, teaching them. Now, when you begin to write a lesson plan, what are the things that you need to keep in mind? Um, of course, you need to keep in mind that you are following your learning objectives. You're not diversing from your learning objectives. Uh, also, the um, uh, another thing uh, which I'm stressing again and again is ensure that, you know, the main truth or the central point uh, should be reiterated throughout the lesson. Don't deviate from the main truth, uh, uh, whether it's your biblical narrative, the object lessons you're using, the attention getters, the activities, all should reiterate the learning objectives and the main truth. Okay. And what do I mean by main truth or the central uh, point uh, of what you are teaching? Now, for example, if you're narrating uh, Zacchaeus' uh, story, uh, you know, of course, you have the topic, okay? So if you're narrating Zacchaeus' uh, uh, narrative, what do you think can be the main truth or the main point you would like to focus on uh, in or bring about in Zacchaeus' story? Any thoughts? If you choose Zacchaeus' is, uh, narrative and you want to, you know, what can be the main truth that you would want to run through out your lesson? Yes, say. Um, that anyone is welcomed to Christ. That Christ accepts all, all people, love. All. Okay, uh, Jesus accepts everyone. Thank you, uh, say, thank you, Kennedy, love. Uh, Sri Kuma says, Jesus loves sinners, okay. Uh, Susan, salvation is for sinners, okay. Good. Ma'am, can I? Yes, sure, Rupa. In that story, uh, towards the end, it, it is written that Jesus, came, his mission, that he has come to save the lost. If he can take that as a team and... 10th verse. Okay. okay. Yes. Yes. Thank you. So if a theme is uh, salvation, salvation for sinners or Jesus loves sinners, then you can use uh, Zacchaeus. So if that is your theme or the main point and or main truth, then you have to have it running throughout the uh, story. Okay. Charles says God has, uh, God has no respect if persons yeah, it's quite didn't understand what you said, Charles. Uh, Asha says, no matter uh, what your condition, what you're facing, he just wants, Jesus wants to help them. The true work of the Holy Spirit, okay? Yes, if you're talking about the work of the Holy Spirit, you can use Zacchaeus' story, yeah? So, okay, these can be your different topics, and then you are choosing Zacchaeus' story. So if you are talking about... Um, God is not respected of persons. Okay, thank you. Um, 
So if you're talking about sin and salvation, uh, then yes, you can choose this lesson and you can talk about, you know, uh, the main truth. How do you keep the main truth running throughout the, the story? As you can talk about, you know, how uh, Zacchaeus, uh, you know, uh, what was his sin? His sin was... Uh, he loved money. He was. Uh, he cheated people. He lied. He was greedy. And what is the? You know, you can talk about sin. You can talk about the consequence of sin. You know, um, because of that, you know, nobody loved Zacchaeus. Nobody wanted to talk to him. Maybe nobody invited him for any functions in that in that town. Uh, and Zacchaeus did not bother. He did not care for people. He was. You know, his his heart was just for. Uh, his love for money. So you can talk about, you know, how sin uh, destroys our relationship with people, how sin takes us away, separates us from God, separates us from people as well, uh, you know, and it gets us into such a place that we can, you know, keep doing things that are wrong and we would not even know that we are doing wrong. So we're just holding on to that main truth, sin, but we are talking about, you know, various aspects of sin, Um and, you know, are you talking about sin and salvation? You know, you can talk about how Jesus came and how he saved uh, uh, Zacchaeus. If you're talking about the work of the Holy Spirit, you can, you can say, you know, you can mention that the very presence of Jesus in Zacchaeus' home, you know, Jesus did not even have to convict him of his sin or did not have to speak about the sin or tell him all the bad things that he's doing. Uh, just that you know, the presence of God in Zacchaeus' home uh, caused Zacchaeus to change. Or if you're talking about repentance, what is true repentance, then you can choose the story because, you know, it. Uh, you can talk about how he repented. You know, it was not just something he said, uh, you know, to do away with uh, Jesus from his house or just show, show Jesus that, yeah, you know, I've changed. So, you know, we all can pray and say, Jesus, I'm sorry, please forgive me. But then we can go, uh, we can go back and, you know, uh, when we go back to the uh, home or go back home or go through the week, we can go and do the commit the same sin. But here we see that, you know, Zacchaeus changed. There was a total change in his whole life. That is uh, repentance. So, you know, when you're talking about uh, a specific topic, you need to uh, make ensure that you are bringing about that, speaking that in different points in that story, you know, um, so that children are, uh, have, get more clarity on what you are saying and, uh, and what is the main uh, truth. Okay, so if you choose uh, love, for Zacchaeus' story, then you can talk about, you know, uh, how Zacchaeus, when he was a sinner, he, he loved only money, he was so greedy, wanted more money that he was willing to cheat people, lie to people, uh, uh, and, you know, uh, but uh, you should talk about God's love, how God, you know, uh, stopped, looked at Zacchaeus, came to Zacchaeus' house, uh, you know, and, you um, uh, 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 met him at this point of his need. Uh, so talk about how, you know, God loves a sinner but does not love the sin that he does and uh, what is the consequences of God's love, you know, in in Zacchaeus' life that, you know, he, he changed, he totally changed. There was a total transformation. He repented and he, you know, he, he just did not act it out but he uh, you know, he, uh, but he went and, you know, he uh, repented or he made right what he was doing. And that is what God's love does uh, for um, us. So you can, you know, talk about uh, or emphasize the main truth or the central point at various points in the story, reiterate it throughout um, the lesson. Um, uh, so when you write out the learning objectives and when you write out your lesson plan, uh, it will help you ensure that, you know, you're following the main truth uh, throughout uh, or the central point as you're teaching the uh, story, okay? And you can also think of, uh, about how you can uh, communicate the main truth uh, throughout the story, okay? Any questions so far? Any doubts? Any things you would like to add? Okay, if there's nothing, we'll move on. So we looked at uh, the learning objectives. Uh, and once you have that learning objectives, you know what is your main truth. 
uh, the next thing you need to uh, write down in your lesson plan is a recap okay so begin with a recap of what was taught last week uh, that's important um, and if you're continuing so that it gives a good continuity to what you have taught last week and then what you are continuing to teach them uh, in this class also it's a good point to do a recap because you can ask them how they have applied uh, or practice what they have learned last class so you can hear different children how they put into practice that will kind of uh, motivate other children those who missed uh, you know um, uh, applying what they learned you can encourage them uh, and tell them that you will ask them next week or you can help them how they can apply what you have taught them uh, last week okay then the, after recap the next um, uh, you know point in your uh, in your lesson plan is introduction now introduction is very important uh, it's important to begin your lesson well because if you begin your lesson well your your task or your job is half done um, and this is the best place uh, to capture the attention and the interest of the children if your introduction is good you know you will just get their attention you will capture their attention and their interest and they will be willing to listen to you for the rest of the 30 minutes uh, but if your introduction is poor is boring uh, and you don't do well in your introduction it's the worst place to lose the in, uh, interest or the attention of the uh, children so if you don't have you know the children's attention you cannot teach them they will be playing they'll be talking they'll be disinterested and you'll have to you know spend a lot of time uh, in class classroom uh, control so important in your introduction is to establish a point of contact with the uh, children now you might have your learning objectives don't tell them okay today's uh, in today's class I'm going to tell you you know these are the learning objectives and uh, this is the story I'm going to say now that is a a, a very poor way of um, uh, starting your lesson because if your learning objective is uh, you know um, children should learn uh, to obey or obedience is uh, very important if you don't uh, you know if uh, uh, obedience is sin or your third learning objective can be obedience uh, has severe consequences now if you're going to you know endless the learning objectives to children they'll say oh my gosh not again you know everyone's telling us to obey 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 i know it's sin i've not been obeying and i just don't want to listen it's so boring uh, so don't list out the learning objectives don't even tell them what is the narrative because if you tell them what is the narrative then you'll have half the children say i know the story and they will not be interested because say hey anyway i know the story now what's the point in listening to her or him you know so um it's very important uh, in your introduction uh, to establish a point of contact with the uh, children. What do I mean by that? You know, you need to talk about something which is within their experience, something which will arouse their curiosity, something with which they can uh, identify uh, what you are going to say. You know, so when you when you do that, you know it. They are just going to um, uh, listen to you very, very, uh, uh, you know, attentively. Now, for example, if you're going to narrate to them David and Goliath's story, which is a very well-known narrative uh, in the Bible, or Zacchaeus, which is a very well-known uh, narrative in the Bible, you know, uh, you, uh, you know, you want to establish a point of contact with them, or arouse their curiosity, or uh, you know, get them into a place where, hey, I'm going through this. Uh, uh, I identify with what he or she is saying. Uh, so let me listen to know how I can help myself. Uh, so if you're talking about um, uh, David and Goliath's story, now how do you, uh, you know, establish a point of contact with them? The best thing to do is, you know, talk about, hey, uh, do any of you have uh, problems, problems that are big you know just like a mountain in front of you or like a giant uh, you're so scared of that you know any of you have any problems difficulties uh, or you know you can just throw open uh, uh, the time for them to talk about it 
or if they are not able to understand you can say you know what when i was in school you know what was my giant or what was my mountain it was math or it was science or it was uh, you know learning the specific language like hindi or kannada which we have in our in, in india you know in bangalore city we have these languages kannada and hindi and it was very difficult for us because not that was not our mother tongue or a, a, a language that our parents speak to us and so it was very difficult for us to learn that in school or it can be math or it can be anything else science um you know so i found that as like a giant in front of me like a mountain you know which i just couldn't think of even climbing it was so difficult or you know i love to sing and uh, you know i had the stage fright and i i just you know couldn't stand in front of people so do any of you have giants like this in your life or do you have a mountain like this or the big wall in front of you and then children can identify and say yes you know what this 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 they all want to talk about it but you'll have to you know uh, control the discussion as well and then uh, you can say uh, okay what do you do when you face a giant or you know face a mountain what do you do uh, and then you know they can share um, and you can share what you you did uh, you know how you let fear overcome and you never went on stage or you know you didn't want to study that subject and and all of those things uh, then you can say today I'm going to share about uh, you know one person who faced a giant and let's see what he did so you know um, you know once you say that children are going to say okay who is this person who you know, faced a giant and what did he do so you know uh, now they're kind of you know you've aroused their curiosity it's something that you know, you're talking about what they are going they are experiencing uh, and you're telling them uh, about somebody who faced the same giant and what they did and what you know how what we can learn to help us you know overcome our uh, giants okay so something that they can identify with something arouses their curiosity uh, so that is very important once you establish that point of contact you know they will be willing to listen to you for the rest of the class now your beginning should always have a clear link with what follows through the lesson it's pointless to have an outstanding or a very good introduction uh, which does not lead to the rest of the lesson so it's important that even as you now have a good introduction you kind of made a point of contact arouse the curiosity uh, something that they identify you know uh, the next step is lead them into things that will you know again uh, help them through uh, what they are going through what they identify with okay so you will succeed in getting the attention of the children or you will lose it if you know if you're not able to connect your introduction with the rest of the story so you should make the beginning of your story as a good stepping stone to the rest of the lesson now you need to ensure that you keep the beginning of the story uh, of your lesson very very brief because you have a whole narrative you have uh, activity or you have an object lesson or an attention getter you have learning you have conclusion you have learning you have a application so you know just keep it very very brief very very short just like i said about david and goliath just a couple of lines you know uh, and c control the discussion as well you know so because you need to remember that your introduction should be very brief because you know uh, it's going to uh, you have a main uh, lesson that follows okay just two more points and i'll end this um, uh, this class today be careful not to give away the secret uh, uh, of the lesson or the narrative in the beginning in your introduction don't say today we are going to hear about a man called jonah who was swallowed by a big fish now that is a story or the full lesson that you had to say for 30 minutes you finished it in just 17 words okay so you know children say we know jonah's story we know what happened they're not interested in um, listening tell us something new okay so don't give out the secret of your lesson in the beginning uh okay and avoid introductions like you know okay now sit up fold your hands or i'm going to teach you about the need to repent uh, you know that may be what you are teaching them or you know the need to forgive others or the need to obey that you should obey now that is something that you're going to teach them that is your learning objective but don't tell it out to them because they will get bored they will not listen um, you know you must first what you need to do is get their attention you know get to a point of contact where you can connect with them uh, you know uh, where they identify themselves with what you are going to teach them, arouse their curiosity so that, you know, they will listen to you and, 
<clears throat> follow through with the less of the lesson. Okay, we'll stop here. We'll continue with the re rest of the lesson plan um, on Wednesday. Anyone has any questions? Any thoughts? Any suggestions? No? Yes, say. Yes, Pastor. Um, I, I've seen in some um, children material study where they have the aim of the topic or the aim of the lesson. I, I don't know if that is, based on what they're saying, it, it looks like we shouldn't have that. If not, it just kind of kills the suspense and uh, the expectation for the class. I don't know. What, what do you think? Uh, aim is, uh, okay, uh, another word for uh, learning objectives is aim. So it can be, you can you either uh, word it as aim or learning objectives. Uh, you have, you know what is the aim, you know what is the learning objective which you need to achieve, that you need to bring about the children. But what I'm saying is don't communicate or tell it to them because, you know, that can bore them, okay? Uh, or, you know, if you're telling them, I'm going to teach you about sin, they will say, how boring. Uh, about salvation, we've heard that so many times. About obedience, it's about forgiveness. Uh, hey, that is what you want to teach them, but how are you going to establish a point of uh, uh, are going to teach them? That is ultimately what you want to bring out, and then that would be bring come through in the lesson that will come through in your conclusion and your learning okay how can we go back home and now since we learned about obedience how can we practice what we learned so that is all going to follow but what i'm saying is don't you know list out your aim or learning objective uh, in your introduction you have it in your mind it's there in your lesson but you know how can you establish a point of contact with um, with uh, with the children that is what i'm trying to say Thank you, sir. Okay. okay, thank you everyone for joining class. Uh, we are three minutes past time, so we'll meet for our next class at 10.03, uh, okay? Thank you, everyone. Have a good break. Thank you, madam. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor.